Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden. We're going to head up towards Gothenburg once again, Jutebori as you would say in Swedish, the Swedish craft beer capital, and we're returning to a brewery who are quite well known for their hazy New England IPAs, but they have been releasing a few other styles recently through Seastimbolaget. But this will be review number eight or so, I think, from this brewery, but they've always got some pretty interesting stuff. So for this review then, we are going to go back to the Gamlestaden area of Gothenburg, kind of to the northeast of the main centre of the city, and we're having a look at another beer from Spike Brewery. This one is called the Keep Bombing, and it's a New England IPA, hazy IPA, coming in at 6.4% ABV. This one was released on the 3rd of March 2020 through the local and small scholied uh, assortment in Seastembolaget, and so at this point in time, this is the latest beer that these guys have done. Um, the last beers that I reviewed from them were uh, Imperial Stouts and also the Porter as well, if I remember correctly, the Sickest Sentence and was it the Aurora? was the name of the, the Imperial Stout that I reviewed. Both of those were really nice. It's been a wee while actually since I had an IPA from uh, from Spike Brewery, so hopefully this one turns out to be very nice, like the previous ones that I had. Um, these guys also have their own bar at the brewery, which opens up every Saturday. I filmed a little out and about video there, which is definitely worth checking out if you uh, if you get the chance. I would recommend that you go there and have a little bit of a look around. Actually, it's a nice little bar, and uh, there's some good beers there, and good guys behind the bar as well, from what I remember. So um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one. Then looking forward to trying it and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. So anyway, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Spike Brewery before. No doubt there will be some more at some point in the near future. There's all the usual social media down there too. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to, and as always, please, do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Spike Brewery then, on to my brewery notes. So Spike Brewery, as I've told you before, are based in Gothenburg, Utebori, on the Swedish west coast and they were founded back in 2014 by Mats Vesberry, Marcus Axberry and Martin Johansson. All three of these guys have previously worked in the IT industry, but now it's only Matt and Marcus who are still active in the company out of the original founders, but they also now have a David DeSourcy who joined the company and became the CEO. And I've met him, and he's uh, actually a really nice guy. He sat and talked to me when I was in Spike Brew, when I was in the, the bar about the... Uh, about the company and everything like that. So maybe I'll do a wee interview with him at some point. We did talk about that when we met. But the brewery, uh, the brewer, sorry, at Spike Brewery is Bernardo Gava, who's originally from Brazil. He trained in brewing at VLB in Berlin and joined the company back in 2017. At the moment, they're producing around 250,000 litres of beer per year uh, and about 25% of the volume that they have is for contract brewing other breweries' beers. Um, I forget, I think um, maybe Duck Pond Brewery brew some of their beers at Spike Brewery, and I forget what the other ones are that brew some of their things there, but a good number of the um, the Gothenburg kind of gypsy breweries, I think All In Brewing might brew some of their stuff with Spike as well, but I'm not sure about that. But the brewery itself can be found in the Gamlestaden area to the northeast of the city, and they've got the on-site tap room there, as I mentioned earlier, which opens up on Saturdays. It also serves food, apparently, but I didn't see the food when I was there, um, but they are looking at opportunities to build their own brewery at the moment as well, and as of March 2020, they've produced around 75 different types of beer according to Untapped. So yeah, a fairly prolific brewery this one. Definitely worth going to visit if you uh, if you get the chance and find yourself in the Gamlestaden area. That, uh, the, the Gamlestaden areas, it's it's kind of interesting actually, it's a little bit more kind of 70s and industrial type thing, but the brewery itself is in an old slaughterhouse actually, and you can see that on the can, it says Slacked Who Sit uh, up there as well, which means, yeah, slaughterhouse. But um, yeah, they've got a nice little tap room there, it's quite sort of retro and hipsterish, uh, if you like, but definitely worth going to visit and trying some, uh, to try some of these 
uh, Spike Brewery beers. They had a few sour beers on tap there when I was at that point, but I don't think they've released those through System Bolaget yet, if I remember correctly, but hopefully those make their way out there, because I did enjoy the sour beer that I had in the tap room, but mainly known for their kind of hazy New England style IPAs. And like I say, one of the Gothenburg breweries that you really need to check out. So um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Spike Brewery for the moment. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And uh, you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to see all the different beers that they've done. So um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer itself. I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. The artwork on this is a little bit different compared to some of the other ones that I've seen from Spike Brewery. Um, you know, these guys have done so many different IPAs. I don't know, I can't remember what I tried in the uh, in the tap room actually. I think I tried a couple of the beers that I hadn't seen but I forget the names of them. But I made sure to try different styles because until that point it was Brute IPAs, um, West Coast and New England IPAs that I tried from them. So I'm sure I tried a stout a sour beer and then I think I did try one of the IPAs that I hadn't had before but the artwork on this one as you can see really nice you can see it's like the inside of a train graffiti type thing there but um, yeah this one is I say a 6.4% New England IPA the hops that are in this one are Citra, Equinox, Cashmere and Amarillo so um, yeah uh, we know that Amarillo big juicy oily oranges um, Citra is the kind of mango one that's got all these little tropical fruit complexities. Equinot is known for its limey qualities and um, Cashmere is quite an interesting one. It's got a sort of lemon limey note to it but it's also a bit melony actually. This is only the fourth or fifth beer I've had I think that's had Cashmere in it and I've, I've noticed you know over the last month or so there's been a couple of beers I've had uh, Cashmere in it so I'm not sure if it's starting to kind of get out there a little bit more. I remember the first one that I tried with Cashmere was actually from Green Gold Brewing down in Slovenia and the beer itself was a New England IPA just called Cashmere and it turned out really nice, lots of lovely melony flavours in it and it's quite similar to the um, the Styrian Wolf hop that they have down there as well actually. Lots of lovely Slovenian hops, Styrian Dragon, Styrian Wolf, but let's not go down that tangent. Let's focus on Spike Brewery for the moment and let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. This, the um, the Keep Bombing uh, New England IPA 6.4% ABV from Spike Brewery in Gamestaden in Gothenburg. So yeah. See how we do with that. I can't remember how much I paid for this beer. I think it might have been about 40 Swedish crowns. Uh, I don't know actually. It might have only been 35 or something like that because it is only a 330, right enough. Um, so yeah, that is a point to make about this one. I can't remember exactly what I paid for it. Either would have been 35 or 40. That's the kind of standard. For a, for a New England IPA these days. But yeah, as you can see with this one, this has poured a lovely... This one's a kind of darker yellow colour in my mind. Um, but yeah, one of the darker yellow leaning uh, New England IPAs. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, but a smaller stream of bubbles going up towards the bottom of the head. The head, incidentally, is about a finger thick, and I would say it's a kind of creamy, ivory type colour that you're getting off this one. It's not perfect white, definitely a little bit of an off-white head. But in terms of its appearance, nothing overly surprising about this beer when you consider that it is a New England IPA. So um, yeah, let's have a look at the aroma then and see how we get on. I will say that when you open this beer up, you really do get a hell of a lot of lemon, uh, limey qualities out of this one. When you've got Equinox and cashmere in this uh, this beer, that's not really surprising. And I know, you know, Citra is going to contribute to that as well. Apparently it's cryo, uh, it's cryo Amarillo that's in this one, not just straight up Amarillo. So let's see what the aroma of this beer is like. Oh, that's interesting, actually. Um, I really do get the oranges out of this. Um, it's double dry hop this one as well, I should say that. This beer is a double dry hop one. Um, but yeah, the oranges for me, you can the oranges on the fruity side of things, the oranges are the thing that's really kind of holding the beer down. That's the backbone of the beer, is the sort of citrusy oranges. Um, I like that actually. But yeah, there's a hell of a lot of lime coming out of this one. And of course when it's Equinot that's in there, you will expect that. And I mean, it's the, the other one from... Uh, that you'll get from uh, New Zealand that's like that, it's Malteke is the one that's going to give you um, a lot of the the limey notes there 
Um, there's a lot of really nice limey hops these days actually, but yeah, um, big kind of limey hit to this one. You do get a little bit of the lemony quality as well, you can smell a little bit of a lemony note at the front of the nose, but for me it's oranges and lime that are really coming out of this. Um, you know, when you've got citra in there, citra can give you some lemon limey quality, sometimes a little bit of lychee and gooseberry as well. Um, I don't really get any of those out of it. Um, yeah, I don't really get any of the, the sort of lychee, um, gooseberry type notes out of it that you can sometimes get. I don't get too much from the citra, to be honest, because normally that would be the thing that would give you the mangoes. But to me, this beer is quite orangey and it's really quite limey in terms of its fruity qualities. Um, yeah, no, really, there's a wee bit of a kind of soft or tropical fruit under there, but it's quite hard to distinguish whether it is straight up mango or whether it's more kind of like the papaya apricot note that you can sometimes get from citrus as well. So for me, yeah, I'd stick to this beer being a bit of a big limey hit. You can pick out some of the melon in there, in fairness as well, from the um, from the cashmere. Melon I find to be quite an oily fruit in terms of the aroma. And cashmere generally, um, I had a beer, I forget which IPA it was now, but I did have another IPA um, that I filmed a couple of days back. Um, that had cashmere in it, and I noticed just how oily a hop it is. It's quite similar to Amarillo in that way, actually. So yeah, lots of limey notes in there. The lime coming out towards the front of the, the nose. The oranges are matched up to that, and you've also got the um, you've also got that kind of big limey character to this too. The aroma, the fruit, fruity side of this, is really quite interesting and quite quirky compared to a number of um, of other beers. That I've had actually quite that I've had recently. Equinot was very very popular maybe about 2017, 2018, and I've noticed it's starting to come back a little bit. But there's that many hops these days um, that it's difficult to keep track. I mean, you've got hops like Jarillo that you're not going to see all that often. There's Sabro now coming out of America, Galaxy. You've got all the ones down in New Zealand as well, which are gradually making their way over to the breweries here in Europe as well, which is always kind of interesting. But um, yeah, lovely fruity aroma to this one. On the malty side of things, um, it's quite smooth actually, it almost smells like some of the German IPAs that I remember having. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the malt that's in this is Munich malt or something like that. But yeah, a nice kind of smooth white bready quality in there. You can pick out a bit of the wheaty notes, some of the oats come out as well, but to me it smells more like a kind of bready base this. And the wheat doesn't have too much of a bite to it, there's maybe a little touch of a biscuity quality to this as well. Um, but you also have, uh, yeah, you also have a little bit of just a, yeah, a wee bit of a kind of McVitie's digestive kind of thing there. But to me, the malt base is quite bready and almost like some of the German um, IPAs that I was having a couple of years ago, actually. In terms of the green side of the hops, I would definitely say that this beer... Um, it leans towards the floral end of things, but it's not too pungent a floral character, if that makes sense. But yeah, the aroma of this one is quite interesting and quite quirky compared to some of the other uh, New England IPAs that I've had in recent times as well. So yeah, take a bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. So this one is the Keep Bombing, a New England IPA, hazy IPA, or they're calling it a foggy IPA. Coming in at 6.4% ABV from Spike Brewery in Gothenburg here in Sweden. Slanju, Skull. Yeah, um, that's a really smooth IPA actually. It does, it's not quite as creamy come to think of it, it is, um, it really is a little bit more sort of bready and things in its malt base, I like that. This is good, um, I like this, it's, to me this is a bit different I think from some of the other ones that I've had, it's, as I say it's been a good few months actually, maybe about three, maybe even four or five months since I had an IPA from Spike Brewery come to think of it. But um, I like this, this is pretty nice, but it strikes me as being quite different to the other ones they've done. Yeah, on one hand it's very smooth, 
from the malty side of things, but it's got a lovely big oily fruity character to it. The, the, fruit, the fruity notes you get out of this, in, in one sense they're oily, in one sense they're a bit wet, but at the same time they're also quite juicy. Um, so yeah, this, this, is, this is a really nice beer actually, I like this. It takes me a little bit of a minute to get my head around it though, just because it is different to other things I've had from Spike before, and it's one of these things, you know, you always get a bit of a preconception about a brewery, if you like, when you're you're going into it. So it's a brewery that I know fairly well, and I'm going in to try a style that I've had a good few of from them, um, but they've pulled off something quite different here, so kudos to them for taking a different approach to the style, I guess you could say. So let's try and break the flavour of this down a little bit then, and describe it properly. So yeah, middle of your palate then, um, you've got that nice kind of white bready malt base there, that blankets the middle of your tongue, and that forms the backbone of the beer. It does say on the can that there's oats and wheat in this one. The wheat that's in this, um, you can get a little bit of it at the back of the palate, and it's it's very, very smooth actually. Um, I don't get, to, I, if I was blind tasting this, I have to admit, I probably wouldn't think there was oats in this one. Uh, the, as I say, the thing with the malt base in this one is it strikes me as being a little bit more almost west coasty in some ways. It really, it reminds, it it really does remind me of some of these um, German IPAs that I had uh, back in what would that be twenty seventeen ish. Um, you know when I was trying some of the German IPAs from the likes of Berliner Berg, uh, Frau Gruber as well when they were just kind of starting up. Pardon me, you know. Um, it really, the malt base that you get out of this, I wouldn't be surprised if there is a little bit of Munich malt or at least some variety of Weiermann malt from Bamberg in Germany. It really just has a bit of a German vibe to it, This uh, the malt base that's in this beer. But yeah, very, very smooth, quite thick and white bready. Um, normally you get a kind of oaty smoothness or creaminess towards the front of the palate. You can pick up maybe a teeny bit of that flavour, but really to me it strikes me as more of a sort of white bready base. In the very centre of your palate, when you've got the liquid on your tongue, you will get a little bit of a kind of biscuity, very close to caramel actually type quality coming out of this beer. Yeah, there is a wee bit of that biscuity, caramelly sweetness there in the middle of the palate. And that actually, in fairness, lingers into the aftertaste a bit as well. Um, yeah, I like how that, that malt base goes together. This is definitely different from what they've done before. Um, in terms of the hoppy side of things then, the malt base is very kind of straight up in that regard. Um, but in terms of the hoppy side of things, back corners of the palate, there is definitely a little bit of earthiness to this one. As you come further forward along the sides of the tongue, that earthiness just um, smoothens up a little bit. You've got some nice floral aromaticity on the front corners of the palate, then round the very front curve of the tongue, it's a wee bit lighter and more uh, and more grassy in my mind. And then behind the front curve of the tongue, that's where you get that nice sort of fruity, uh, oily bubble coming out of the beer, where you get those nice juicy fruity esters from the hops pushing their way out of the beer. So let's look at that. So yeah, um, I actually would say that um, compared to the the sort of aroma, I thought the oranges were quite prominent. This one really, it's kind of it's mainly the, the lime and the melons I think that's coming out of this one. Um, if you go to the back of that, the palate, the uh, the the oily fruity part of the beer, there's a wee bit of that kind of um, there is a wee bit of that some kind of grapefruity, darker tropical fruity note there. As you come further forward from it, I don't know, You don't. I don't really get too much from the citra otherwise. Um, I don't really get too much in the way of a tropically fruit. I really find this beer to be, it's the cashmere I think that's kind of dominating this. Because um, when you go right to the front edge of the palate, you get this, the lemon limey notes, the lime particularly, then behind that you've got the kind of melony qualities. I don't even get so much in the way of orange out of this one, come to think of it. And when there's cryo amarillo in there, that's a, a quite an unusual thing I would say. When I take the beer in right enough, when I take it in the 
and it's sitting there on the palate, you do get some of that orange there. But I think as you go further into the aftertaste, the orange sort of fades away. You can feel it on the front, uh, kind of all close to the front tip of your tongue, but then the orange just fades away. And I feel that it's the melon that starts to take over, and then the lime starts to push its way out as well. And you get a few lemony, zesty type things coming out of the beer too. So, um, yeah, overall, I'd say that this is quite a, a bready and limey. IPA, but definitely a bit of a, an appearance from the melon at the same time too. So this is a really quite quirky one compared to others that I've had in this particular style recently. Um, but it's definitely worth having a go at and seeing what you like. I mean, if you like the um, the the Waiiti, um hop um, from New Zealand, you will quite enjoy this as well. The cashmere, as I say, it's a big. Um, sort of melony but also lemon limey hop and equinot as well and um, if you like beers that have these kind of hops in them the Y.E.T. and the, the equinot you are going to enjoy this one but this one really reminds me of a few of the, the German IPAs I reviewed a couple of years back actually so it's a little bit of a nostalgia trip this one actually but thumbs up to, uh, to Spike Brewing, uh, Spike Brewery sorry again for doing something a little bit different. This is what you want from breweries that you know. You do want them to produce things that is that are going to test your palate a little bit. So quite a limey um, and smooth, bready IPA this one in my mind. So um, yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel, um, in terms of the mouthfeel, I'd say that this is quite... Um, it's kind of at the bottom end of mid-body. The carbonation is very smooth. It's got a nice kind of wetness to the mouthfeel. It's got a little touch of oiliness to it as well. But the malt base, um, I'd say that overall the, the mouthfeel on this one is light end of mid-bodied. Carbonation is very smooth and it's, it's a balance between wet and oily overall. Um, in terms of bitterness, oh, I think this one's, it's a bit more than 30, I think. It must be about 40. IBUs, it feels like it's got a little bit more bitterness. You do get some of that floral aromaticity there just kind of sitting uh, on the edges of your palate. So I think it might be a 40 IBU beer, or maybe even, it could even be a little bit higher than that to be honest, maybe 50 at an absolute max. There is a wee bit more bitterness to this one, but not overly much. It's not going to blow the head off you in terms of IBUs. Malt base, like I said, is very, very smooth. There's a wee bit of a, a sweetness there in the middle of the palate too. But the fruity notes, you've got some lovely kind of oily um, and also juicy fruity qualities pushing their way out with this one. Quite limey, quite citrusy this beer overall, um, which is interesting. Um, orangey in the beginning, a um, little bit of a, a tropical note in the middle. Um, but definitely leaning to a lot towards those kind of limey notes. The melon gives it a good bit of oiliness as well. But a really interesting beer, this one, and it was nice to be able to review another Spike Brewery beer for you here on the channel. Let's leave it at that for this one then. This one was the Keep Bombing, a New England hazy, foggy IPA, whatever you want to call it. Swedish West Coast IPA would be the other one from uh, Spike Brewery in Gamlestaden in Gothenburg here in Sweden. Another nice beer from these guys and definitely a bit different to the other ones I've had from them previously. So um, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Spike Brewery as well. We'll definitely return to these guys at some point fairly soon and uh, I look forward to that. This one was a really interesting, quite quirky beer. Check out my social media, check out Spike Brewery, and I'll catch you guys very soon. Slanja, Skull, cheers.